You know, if I had a nickel every time a movie that was associated with the name Webb was a critical bomb, I would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? Madam. Web. I have never seen a film so amateur and so incompetently made in a very long time, while at the same time, I couldn't look away even if I wanted to on several occasions. This film is directed by S.J. Clarkson, which if you don't know who she is, you're not alone. It's mostly just a lot of forgettable Marvel shows are desperately trying to be canon, a lot of generic family drama type of movies, and drama type of shows that you would see old people watch. As you can see, we're already on a good side start. This movie is also a part of the disconnected but factually terrible Sonyverse that is an association with Marvel but isn't a part of the major MCU. I like how even with all of the MCU's misses, Marvel still doesn't want Sony shitty ass movies. Well, I mean, at least Sony doesn't overwork its workers. Oh. Oh no. Well, at least they don't support AI. Oh. I should really shut the fuck up sometimes. Oh, so you're both companies that hates its workers for building the success of your companies and are piles of shit. It's like the both of you are perfect for each other. Uh, da, 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 da. So is this Sonyverse movie that has been in development hell for years, I haven't seen that one before, based on an already niche character going to be good? Hell no, but let's talk about this movie anyways. The cinematography. This movie's camera movements actually made me feel nauseous while watching it. I've never seen a movie where I actually felt nauseous while watching it. It's like that one scene from Bad Boys, but it's the entire goddamn movie. It's like this film had so many shots that they had, and they just went fuck it and used all of them. They do this handheld perspective sometimes that just doesn't make any sense for why it's there. There's just no reason to use it in this movie. It's obvious that this director has no idea why other directors use this perspective. In Surf's Up, the method was effective with its mockumentary feeling that it was going for. District 9 is also another example where it's used to make it feel more grounded and real in a world that is surrounded by walking CGI creatures. And when you look at that, they're both owned by Sony. It's not like this movie uses it consistently. It would just pop out of nowhere and it would just be extremely distracting. Also, the camera likes to do this thing where it zooms in and out all the time where it wouldn't even make any sense. When you zoom in a movie, it has to emphasize an action or some sort of emotion that the character is going through. And since this movie is technically Spider-Man related, which honestly I just forgot that it was, a good example of this being used would be with Sam Raimi. Quick zooms can be a style of itself, if used sparingly, and may I add correctly. But instead in this movie, they film a regular scene like how Zack Schneider films fucking Superman. It's like it's purpose purposely making us focus on something that we shouldn't even focus on. It's just constantly shaking around and it was a headache to deal with. As the film went on, these problems became less prevalent, but it was still a consistent problem throughout the film, which kinda sucks since it's a FUCKING MOVIE. The editing. Holy shit, do not get me started. This movie actually feels fucking broken. Things happen so fast that I genuinely cannot follow the movie sometimes. And then at times when I feel like scenes should be compressed, they're overly long for some reason. Since this movie treats us like fucking toddlers, there are multiple scenes to show us that she can see into the future. But it's done in such an egregious and condescending way. For a lot of the time, it just tells but doesn't show, with people talking for purely exposition reasons. And then once it shows us shit, it won't ever stop showing us stuff. Like, I get it. She has fucking powers. You don't have to have a fucking subway scene that goes on for like five minutes. Like, I can't have a healthy medium. Oh, well maybe for the fighting scenes, maybe the editing is better. It's somehow worse. I legit had to pause in some of the action scenes just to realize what the fuck was happening. It felt like one of those YouTube shorts where it's just two videos playing at once. It was just overstimulating for no fucking reason. The pacing is, do you want to fall asleep? Or, do you want to experience what a car crash is at two times speed? It's just such a confusing mess that just leaves you going, what the fuck is happening? The acting and characters. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. I can't find the acting, guys. So the main character is so extremely unlikable. She goes to this baby shower and pretty much makes it all about herself. She gets annoyed when the three kids that she kidnaps, which she says that she doesn't, but she straight up does, gets up and leaves after like 12 hours of her being gone. At worst, she comes off as extremely bitchy, and at best, she's more awkward than anything. Obviously doesn't like working with people, but somehow she's a goddamn doctor. It's like she's pretending to be a doctor 
even though this is supposedly her profession. They brought up the fact that she was a paramedic throughout the whole entire movie, but I kept on forgetting that she was because it's not important to her character at all. There's a scene with her character where she basically just trains these three girls to do CPR, and it's just so awkward the whole entire time because, by the way, this lasts for like two minutes, so you awkwardly just watch them do CPR, and it's going girl to girl, not just one girl, but all of them have to do it. Meanwhile, in the middle, the fucking main girl is just going, yeah, yeah, congrats, wow, you're doing great. It's just so damn awkward. Her character is trying to protect these main three girls from the villain, but with these powers, it's sort of like she uses them in an arrogant way. There's a lot of scenes that she predicts, but it's like she goes out of her way to make it overly complicated. Like, there's this one scene that she predicts that the villain is gonna attack the girls, so she gets a fucking car and drives it off this parking lot spot. How the fuck are you supposed to know where the hell he is? There's a big, huge wall in the way. Or how she just leaves at the three girls behind and just goes, I'm gonna go to the Amazon rainforest real quick. I know that you guys don't know where the fuck this main villain is coming from or when he's gonna strike, but uh, yeah, that sounds like a you prom and you just can't come with me for some odd reason, but yeah, fuck you. She's just so confusingly stupid at times. Now let's move on to the three other girls. Honestly, their performances are very interchangeable. The only thing that I didn't like was how overly stereotypical they were. Oh, you have the nerd character that won't shut the fuck up about, like, math equations and shit. You have a punk kid that has a skateboard because that's still relevant. And then you had the other girl that honestly I I forgot that she was there. <laughs> what the fuck? She played Dora? <laughs> I was not expecting that honestly. All of the interactions between the main character and the three girls is just so cringe. It's like they try to make jokes and then it's just like what was that even a joke or were you just saying something? I honestly couldn't tell sometimes. And then it's so obvious when they do make a joke where it's just so fucking stupid. Now he was like a spider person. He didn't climb on the ceiling. It was more like a crawl. Shut up! Just shut the fuck up! And the main villain. Oh, I saved him for last. This is by far the worst performance I have seen from an actor ever. And I've watched Dragon Ball Evolution, Catwoman, and The Last Airbender movie. So I know my shit when it comes to bad acting. <laughs> The actor puts on this fake tough voice that is always so fucking hilarious every single time he does it. Where's my spider? They took my spider. They took my spider. <laughs> Fuck, I coughed. They took my spider. I need my spider. But imagine that sort of tone that he has, but it's throughout the whole entire damn movie. Mostly all the lines I had to pause and just mimic him. I don't know if it's because he wasn't directed well, which a lot of evidence points to that being true. I don't know if he didn't give a shit, or if he's just simply a bad actor. I wouldn't know. I don't know his fucking movies. It's like a child trying to be intimidating. I'm pretty sure kids doing make-believe is more convincing than his performance. Oh, he's so intimidating. He gets hit by a car like three times, even though he's a Spider-Man apparently. He also gets trapped by any of some rubble, which the Spider-Man standards, that's not really a lot, so it makes him even less intimidating. Mixed in with his character being weak and sounding like he has a replica Death Note at home while drinking Mountain Dew game fuel, he just sounds so nasally and nerdy and it's just so hilarious. And the funny thing about his character is that it's so obvious that they're trying to create like this legally distinct Spider-Man. Like instead of swinging, he just jumps very high. Ooh. And instead of web shooters, he can poison people. It just yells, this is my original character, do not steal. And the thing about the poison is that it's not even consistent because they bring up this whole entire plot line of, oh, it will stop your heart. But it's sort of like the movie forgets that it fucking exists because they bring it up once and then never again. And the ADR on him, oh my god. I don't know what ADR is, it's pretty much when people go back whenever somebody may have fucked up on a line. Our line didn't make sense before, so now they have to re-edit it to where it sort of makes sense. It's a pretty common occurrence when it comes to the post-production of movies. But in this movie, it's sort of like they didn't even try. I'm convinced that most of the actors' lines are probably redubbed. I would say a good 50% at least. You have no idea of the torment and torture of dying over and over again. 
but yeah, he's obviously a highlight of the movie. I honestly think that without him, I think I would have just turned this movie off, but it's like a car crash. I just couldn't look away. So all of their performances da -da 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 suck the CGI. You know, when I was watching this with a friend, I kept on saying, oh my god, this looks like Spider-Man 3. And then I realized, that's a fucking insult to Spider-Man 3. I think this is on the same level as fucking Catwoman. It looks worse than the first Spider-Man movie, which that one still kind of holds up. Whenever the villain pops up and he's just crawling around, it looks like the same animation quality from the Spider-Man 2 game. And then whenever the main character goes into this sort of future web state, it reminds me of those five gum ads. The final battle in particular is just so bad looking. You have fake rubble crashing onto people, fake fire that's everywhere. This movie is just so ugly to look at. It looks like a straight to streaming superhero show. Oh wait, it makes sense now. But all in all, the visuals fucking suck. And at times it makes me worry if I'm gonna have an epileptic fit. The advertising, you know, typically I don't really focus on the advertisings in films. I only notice them when they're obviously being shoved in your face. I have never seen a movie besides Food Fight where I've been pushed with a constant fucking ad and I never thought that in a million years that a brand in a movie becomes plot relevant. There's this constant location that they keep on showing where it's like a Pepsi warehouse of some kind and you see this about like three to four times in the movie which made me go oh no this is where the final fight is gonna be and I swear if somebody is like oh but that Pepsi can that conveniently keeps on swapping and facing the camera every single time it's shown in this conversation that one Pepsi can is actually foreshadowing for the final fight so it's genius. If you say that I'll go to your house and break your fucking legs. The advertising was so aggressive in this movie that it genuinely made me think, did they just make this movie as a fucking ad? I think that they genuinely realized that they had such a shit project that they were like, oh, how do we redeem this? Oh yeah, let's get backed up by Pepsi. So then they sold their creative soul and just made this movie into a fucking ad. Which props on you, movie. I'll never have a fucking Pepsi ever again. The time period choice. Now this movie is set in 2003, which I don't know if this movie takes place when I was in my dad's balls or if I wasn't. I guess it depends on the month. But jokes aside, I genuinely don't know why it's set in 2003. It's such a confusing choice that adds nothing. I don't know if it's trying to appeal to 2000s kids. I don't know if it's because they realize that they didn't really have an identity for their movie. I honestly do not know why it's here. Like sure, they show off, oh my god, Blockbuster and Britney Spears that they keep just shoving down your throat for some reason. As if that was the only popular artist in 2003. Having a PSP there even though it released in 2005. There's a callback to the scene from Spider-Man 1 and it was it just feels like a bland way for people to go, Oh my god, it's the PSP! Oh my god, it's something that I recognize from when I was younger! When they're not doing anything special with the time period that they set themselves in. So the time period that it's in is just extremely pointless to me. So what is the summary of my thoughts on Madam Web? I think the acting was horrendous besides the main villain. I mean, he's just comedy gold. I mean, as for bad reasons, but at least he didn't put me in a coma. The CGI was so unbelievably bad that editing made this movie at times completely uncomprehensible. The advertising for this movie just reassures my hatred for capitalism. The plot felt like a kid just messing with some toys and just making up a plot as it goes along. The music sucks, the time period doesn't make sense, and this movie is just flat out the worst movie of the 2020s and maybe in the last decade. The only thing enjoyable from this movie is how the main actor handled it. She clearly didn't give a shit and she was honestly saying a lot of things that I think she shouldn't have, at least when it comes to contract reasons. I have a new movie coming out. It's called Madam Web. It is in the Marvel Universe. So it's kind of like if AI generated your boyfriend's perfect movie. But she has bigger balls than most people, so I salute you, Dakota Johnson. And this movie was so horrendously bad for her that once the first trailer was completely bombed on, she fired her hiring agents. If that doesn't speak volumes about the movie itself, then I don't know what is. This movie is by far one of the worst movies I have seen in a while. I just cannot look away from the disaster. It's genuinely such 
an interesting movie to watch not because it's good but i feel like it can be genuinely a learning tool for upcoming filmmakers to learn from and while you're watching it it just makes you wonder who the fuck is this for anyways this movie's the worst and it's kind of weird because i would recommend watching it just because of how bad it is but i also don't want to support hate watching so i'm giving it this channel's first one out of ten it puzzles me that sony is still making these fucking movies constantly when they're this bad by the way you know that line that was infamous in the trailer he was in the amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died it wasn't even in the fucking movie they were so embarrassed by that line that i think they just straight up took it out anyway subscribe if you want to like if you want to even comment if you want to i don't care you do you and have a good day